A and N and R and B is a conversation about R and B music relating to real life, and they also celebrate R and B artists. And um, I am so excited about this podcast. Um, you, uh, they're sponsored by Heritage Hip Hop. They're on YouTube, so you can subscribe. And I want to give a shout out to my boy Nas the Romantic. <laughs> I heard you were a fan of mine. Thank you so much. I love your smile. I really do. Bye. Word, word. Y'all saw that. That was my girl, Shanice. She gave me a shout out, yo. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your man, Nas Romantic. This is Ain't in the R&B. And today we are celebrating, ooh, excuse me, celebrating the women of music because this is of course black well not black but woman's history month and a couple weeks ago i think was woman's appreciation day so i just wanted to give um give a a a shout out to all the female artists that i came up on growing up so um this is for the Anita Baker. This is for the, of course, the Shanices. This is for the Phyllis Hyman's. This is for the In Vogue's. All those, all those people that that made history, innovated, and inspired other artists coming up. Like I know, um, I think um, artists like Brandy and, of course, once again, I'm gonna mention Shanice. Love Shanice. They were inspired by Whitney Houston. Um, you had. Janet Jackson that her showmanship is still emulated in today's artists like Beyonce like speaking for myself I still wonder how she does the dance moves and keeps her voice controlled man it's like it's it's amazing so um just shout out to the women like um I think my 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 fondest memories of female artists were is um listening to Anita Baker like I remember like when we were younger my aunt used to pick me and my cousin up from school and on a ride home like Anita Baker would play and I would remember like her voice was so soothing um Whitney Houston like oh man I'm your baby tonight Whitney Houston was so iconic that when she did the national anthem they took that sound bite and sold that as a single because America loved it. Like these were the ladies that were iconic in their field. You had Etta James that was portrayed in a movie by Beyonce. Um, the people that pioneered, you know, females working in music. So tonight, me and the hip hop soul Karev, we're gonna be giving a we're gonna give this show to y'all, ladies, man. This is for y'all. Karev, what you got to say, brother? Peace. <laughs> yo, yo, what's going on? Yo, man, right now, right now, I'm just going to say, if today is all about the ladies, then let's get them their proper respect, yo. You know? Sure, sure. Uh, we're going to give them, uh, we're going to get them the highest acknowledgement, man. I mean, what else is there to do, right? Yeah. I'll let you lead the way. Come on, man. How you want to, how you want to do this? Um, <laughs> this one's for my mom. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna uh, start this with all of uh, uh, Lucille Bogan. Oh, yeah, 
Lucille Bogan. That was uh I called her the little Kim before way, way, way before there was a little Kim. Her lyrics were raunchy as hell. If you ever listen to a Lucille Bogan song, like you'll be like, they talk like that in 1920s. They used to say stuff like that in the 1920s. Was uh what she say? She, back now? <laughs> <laughs> she was talking about, you know, giving up that knowledge and uh Certain and what her body was, was as big as dying. She Are said you? her nipples was as big as thumbs. That's what she Ooh. said. She Ooh. said, if you lick my pussy, I'll suck your balls. <laughs> that was back in the day, yeah, when it was raunchy as hell. She was raunchy in the club shaking. Like, yeah. And it's crazy because, like, yo, like I told my mom, I had yo, I had my mom listen to the songs. I was like, Mom, you ever heard of Lucille Bogan? And she was like, No. I was like, Well, listen to the songs, right? And I was like, and after you listen to that, don't ever, 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 ever talk about my generation's music ever again. Because uh, y'all had some stuff out that was crazy before even you was born. <laughs> so yeah. You can't blame us. Yeah. You can't blame us. Yeah, yo. Lucille Bogan is the truth because any woman that can get on stage and say, suck my pussy, <laughs> and, and it's not hip hop, use a special lady. You know what I'm saying? That, that was very, very official. You know what I mean? She, she did it with the blues. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, you started with Lucille Bogan, but w- women, women have made women made music, yo. I'm gonna keep it real. I mean, as far I mean, as much as we talk about women singers, if it wasn't for the women, music would never have gotten so well celebrated. I don't give a damn about Luther Vandross because he wanted to be well. <laughs> he was a diva. I'm not going to talk about um, <laughs> Michael Jackson. If you really look at what women have contributed to music, women gave it soul, sensuality, yeah. a nurturing, charisma, flair, and a, I mean, for me personally, a woman that sings takes me somewhere else. I don't know what a man that can sing does to a woman, but for a woman that can sing, it's not only her voice, it's her presence. So to celebrate right. that, I mean, it's only natural that we, we we go across genres and talk about the many women that we we have loved and made music special. Don't you agree? Yeah, of course. But uh, and, it, and it's um it's good that you say that because um women um women are emotional beings. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they're very good at putting that emotion into the song. So when they sing the song, you feel that emotion. Like if, if they're hurt, you feel that hurt. Look at look at a lot Mandy of Mandy Blige songs. Not going. <laughs> that's the go-to. Yeah. Not going to cry. You know what I'm saying? Um, when they're up, they're up. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you feel that they portray that, and, and um, and uh, and that carries on into to the male counterparts. You know what I'm saying? Yo, shout out to um the block, yo. Cause um not to cut you off, but we're actually doing Mary J. Blige's What's the 411 album and remix album. And oh, let me get in on that. You gotta join us on Twitter. Anybody you can join us on Twitter. Twitter space is Saturday at two o'clock. But not to cut you off, but um when you talk about Mary J. Blige, Mary J. Blige is one of the most significant people in music history when it comes to women and hit and music right. because she was the person who on a major mainstream level made a career out of melding R and B and hip hop before it became the bullshit we have today. Yeah. But I mean to cut you off, yo. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like <I> said, like, <laughs> you got it. Yeah, but like I said, like we when she was down, you had the not gonna cry when she was up. It's I'm fine, fine, fine. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Like she gave you know. Yeah, niggas didn't like that shit like that. They made you. <laughs> The women made you feel the music. It, it wasn't just you listening to the words and listening to how the words rhymed. It was mm. it was how how their emotion melded with the with the instrumental and in turn making you feel that emotion. All right, so fuck it. Let me ask you a real question. Let me ask you a real question. Give me three songs that were sung. From an emotional standpoint, that made you go into the emotion. Just because by Anita Baker. Okay. Um. 
how many ways? Tony Braxton by Tony Braxton. Mm, that's a good one. And um, oh man, yesterday by Shanice. Okay, I got I got three songs for you, brother. Go ahead if you want to say something else. What you? I'm gonna cut you off. Y'all apologize. I got excited. Uh, <laughs> Oh, this Yo. is the first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like I like I like music um conversation. That gets me excited. Because we yeah, always I talk about I don't like this because of this, and I don't like that. But I like yeah. to hear what people say. But three three songs that got me into an emotion. Mm-hmm. Shirley Caesar, no charge. We going gospel, y'all. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, Shirley Caesar, um, no charge is um some special. Mm-hmm. Uh Kelly Price, friend of mine. That one right Which one? there, Which one? the one that came on the radio, because I don't know her album. <laughs> Both of them, no, it was two. No, uh, I don't the know. Remix. What's that? The fuck that remix? That's the main oh, Mr. one. Mr. Biggs, man. Mr. Biggs on the man, remix, man. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I Yo. Know with Mr. Biggs. Nah, not that one. No, 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 the, no. The, no, the, first, no. the original one. Yeah. The original one. Yeah, the original. When she's by herself. Yeah, because you heard yeah. the, the pain of her voice when she's on Friend of Mine. Yeah. Yeah. And the last one, I want to give a shout out to Light Skin Thighs. Yo. Lisa Fisher, how can I ease the pain? I love Lisa Fisher. Shout out to Dre and Nicole on the check in. What's up, sis? How you doing? Yo, what's up, Dre? <laughs> I love Dre and Nicole, the the, yes, the, yeah, the beautiful bully. Yo, Ugh. yes, sir. Yes. And if you want to see how beautiful yes. she is, check her out. We did an interview with her. Check us out yes. on YouTube. And you'll see that interview. Yes. Check out Dre and Nicole, beautiful, beautiful woman. And her, our music is fire. Make sure you check out that yes, '90s R&B and Force music. Yes, but yeah, Lisa Fisher, that was one of my biggest crushes, yo. I love Lisa yeah. Fisher back in man. Let me tell you something about light skin thighs, yo. She's in that thing like this. How can I ease it? I was, yo. Mm. You know whose <laughs> yeah, legs did it for me? Mm. Who? You know whose legs did it for me, man? Who? Um Stephanie Mills. Yeah, that's a bad woman. Look, yo. look at that comfort of a man video. Mm, that's a bad one. All yo. them thighs out. I'm like, who? <laughs> And that's what made us appreciate music, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it was the attraction to the women, of course, you know, because a woman yeah. that could sing, of course, they always pick the prettiest, you know, women for the industry, but yeah. the voice could be just as alluring as the look, you know what I'm saying? Because, yo, yeah. putting an emotion into a song really makes it pop, don't you agree? Yeah. Out that's of the, the three songs. So what we just said, like, that's the whole premise of what we said, like, coming into the show. But out of the three songs that you picked, what did you feel? Um, well, both I'll say the the Anita Baker and the Tony Braxton songs. It was a it was a deep love. Because mm-hmm. you gotta think. Um, listening to the lyrics of um, just because it's like, when when I think about how much I'm loving you, there's no limitation. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. like how many ways like. How many ways she's just counting down the ways to how much she loves that man? Like who does who doesn't want to be a man? Who, who what's a man that doesn't want to be loved like that by a woman? You know what I'm saying? And Shanice dealt with the pain of having to end a relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Like yesterday is deep. Yeah. Yesterday is deep. Yeah, I think um, for me, I'm not a mom, so um, no charge. It reminds me of with my mom passing away. That, but Kelly Price, friend of mine, is different, yo. Because when you feel the pain of her voice about losing her man and how the friend was a part of it and all this, other, man, listen. If you ever known betrayal before. That's the yeah. one thing I love about R&B. Now that I'm learning about R&B more, R&B is music by itself. But when you can relate to what they're singing about, it's a whole different world that you're stepping into. Because there ain't nothing like a breakup until you're in a breakup and you hear a breakup song. You know what I'm saying? And because I'm usually angry, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like songs like Shit Damn Motherfucker more than anything else. You know what I'm saying? Because those songs I can relate to, but Keeping it real, yo. It, it's certain. It's certain songs that when you're there, mm-hmm. you're there, and nobody can take that from you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Lead the way, bro. Speaking of, speaking of songs talking about parenthood, the one song I, uh, that comes to mind is If I Could by Regina Bell. I think that's Regina Bell, right? I'm just talking about If I Could, I Protect You from the Sadness in Your Eyes. Yeah, keep talking. I don't know that song. Yeah, you don't know that song? No. Like, that song comes to mind every, like, every now and then when I'm with my kids, man, because... Mm-hmm. As a parent, like you always want to protect your kids from the the craziness that's in this world, but you can't because you have to let them fly and live that on their own. It's stuff they have to learn on their own. It's stuff that no matter how much you want to, you got to step back. You can't protect them from it. And this, me as an overprotective father, it's like it's like a, you know, like. I wish I could, but I, I can't. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta like let the reins go and let them do their thing. And that's the one song. If you look at the ain't in the R&B page, I use that song for my um youngest son's tenth birthday. Cause that's, that's the dope. way I feel as as he grows up, as he grows up, and I use like pictures from him to a baby to now. And I understand because I have three other ones that have grown now. So I understand like having to having to let go, having to like let them go hang out now because they're they're adult age and like still being worried because they're still your babies. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I like like I understood exactly where she was coming from in the emotion in that song. So like I agree, Dre. Like that is a great song. Like I like it's it's ah oh, man, it's it's just it's it's a it's a unique feeling. You saw his eyes when he was talking about it's that, unique. y'all. It's unique. Yeah, you went somewhere. You went somewhere with that one. Hey man, I don't got songs like that. I mean, I don't know. The songs that stand out for me are pain songs. Those are the songs that really are hopeful songs, you know. Like, I don't know how you want to do this. Do you want to go by genre? Do you want to go by, like, how do you want to break the show down? We, we got, we got break, I mean, excuse me, we got break. It yes, down we, by do. Genre. We, we, yes, we, we do. Yes, we do. You sure? Because, because it's music. So let's yeah, give I people mean, the understanding that women have contributed to every single genre of music that we know. There's no music out here that a woman has not touched and made better, or right. or brought the world's attention to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, let's 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 be real. We we could we could right. show our knowledge of this game. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's go into the blues then. And I, when I think of that, um, and you go into the emotion of it, you seen Cadillac Records, right? Of course. All right, Beyonce. Remember, remember when um Etta James was singing to Chess? Yeah. And um, it was a song I heard, but okay. like she was singing about. A man getting married, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And she loved herself, but couldn't have because she was getting married to another. Because he, excuse me, he was getting married to another female. Mm-hmm. But to parallel that, she wanted a relationship with that with, uh, with Chess, the owner of the record company. Mm-hmm. But it was a forbidden relationship because what he was married, mm-hmm. and she was hurt by that. And then, like the way Beyonce portrayed. That emotion when she sang that song, like you could tell, like it's killing her inside. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, you got the you you got that from the blues. You got um. Let me go. I'm going ahead. Mm-mm. Right. Let's go back and forth. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Billie Holiday. Mm-hmm. Strange Fruit is one of the most beautiful songs I ever heard about Black Pain. If y'all don't know, check out the Billie Holiday movie that was on Hulu, The State Against Billie Holiday, and what Billie Holiday went through as a woman who sung and was talking about the struggle. For those of you who don't know, Strange Fruit is a song about black bodies hanging on trees, lynchings, and the pain that came forth from the lynching of these bodies hanging from trees. See... We give a lot of people credit in society for being on the front lines, male and female, but Billie Holiday was one of the artists who really took it to the forefront back in the 20s, 1920s era, when hanging out with Malcolm X, Detroit Red, 
hanging out with um the civil rights leaders at the time. And as a celebrity, she was at the forefront of bringing that pain to the masses. And Strange Fruit was solidify Billie Holiday as one of, not only is she a great singer, but that woman was on the front lines fighting for freedom with her music. I salute Billie Holiday. And that song right there, that, man, that opened my soul to what a singer could do, even back then in them black and white movies, you know? Yeah, and I see. Um, I see the song "Freedom" would mirror that. Freedom by. Freedom from the Panther soundtrack. All right, we're jumping all over the place now. Yeah, <laughs> let's just go stick to genre, man. Just let's not skip too yeah. much. Let's 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 yeah. really like concise it. How about scat? Anybody who did scat, modern jazz, swing music, anything like that, has ever really opened you up? No, I never really was I mean, I mean into that. I like it, but I never got deep into like scat and swing like that. Ella Fitzgerald was I, a like, monster. I could, I, could, I could I could groove to it, you know, I, but yeah, like I never really, I can't really tell you about too much about yeah that. Yeah. I think I think to be honest with you, the blossoming women have always been in music, but the real blossoming of the power of a woman in music came in Motown. What do you think? Diana Ross and the Supremes. Or Martha Vandell. Martha Vandell's or something, I don't think it was. That's when the groups got big. Look at the um right. the Charmels. That wasn't Motown, but it was based off of that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we had um damn there's so many people. I'm losing my mind. Tammy Terrell. Yeah. You know, we had so like Motown and that Detroit sound. Even though we know the temptations and the four tops and all that, the women held their own at that time too. Because wasn't Cadillac Records versus Motown at one time? Wasn't it them two battling for the top black rate, um record company? Well, whatever that was based off of, wasn't it them two? I don't know because uh, I know Cadillac Records was like more blues because you had Howlin' Wolf, Muddy Waters, you know. Yeah, Walton, but weren't that wasn't that the the two labels that was battling on some who's gonna take? The sound, yeah, the Arthur Reeve and the Vandals. Thank you, thank you, Dre. There you go. Yep. But but wasn't it like two labels that was battling at the time, and Motown won the battle? Let me look it up, y'all. Of course. James Brown had um, what's homegirl name, yo? Who did Think with um Patra, another female? Uh, you bet, Lynn 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 Collins. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Good. around that time when James Brown and the Motown and the 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s era, women really took front line in music mm-hmm. because as the sound of the genre changed, more women became visible and more t- different types of voices were heard. Don't you think? I can agree. I can agree. Definitely so. Um, then going in what from from because Motown would be sixties going into the seventies, no right fifties sixties into 50s, the seventies. Motown, 50s, 60s, my fault. Fifties sixties going to 70s. okay. It was Due Tone Records. That was the soul company that came before Motown that was battling Motown for the number one spot. You ever heard of Due Tone Records? No. Nah. I remember this story. I'm, I'm I'm looking it up right now because they did doo-wop music. <laughs> you know about you know Earth Angel, Earth Angel. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo, do do tone records. I'm looking at it now. They went. They were doo-wop, rhythm and blues, gospel blues, jazz, and comedy, and they were going neck and neck with um Motown. They were the home of black exploitation, Red Fox. Uh, Bobby Blue Band, The Miracles, B.B. King. You never heard of that story at all, sir? Mm. Yeah. So, like... I mean, I know about B.B. King, but, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's always... Remember, when there's always one, there's always somebody that tries to set something up against it to try to battle it. Yeah. Like, you know, there was James Brown. There was another bunch of fake James Browns that you didn't hear about ever again. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) That, that's that's how they always do, did our music. So they will always try to pit one person against another person in the battle. And obviously, Motown was the cream of the crop. You know what I'm saying? Of course. I mean, you had um, yeah, writers like Smokey Robinson, man. 
Yeah. Writing hits, Stevie Wonder. But then, of course, here comes the Jackson 5. How about this, though? I mean, how about this? Motown used its women to do what other music labels did not do. Think about this. Billie Holiday was a self-sufficient jazz blues artist, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing else was around her, right? Etta James, very sufficient singer. Nothing else was around her, right? Think about how Motown... Uh, all right, tell me. Who, who did mean, Etta you James mean? As, mean? As, you mean as far as other female artists on the label? Or, or Period. Period. The, the, women, the women were always on their own. Always on their own. If you think about what Motown did, Motown put out Diana Ross and the Supremes. Right. And they had them do what well, in hip hop we would call features. They had them do features or other big artists' records. Think about I'm going to make you love me with the Supreme, Diana Ross and the Supremes and the Temptations. Mm -hmm. What other label did that at that time? The only person that had the balls to do that was James Brown with Lynn Collins with the JBs and stuff like him and, and her. Yeah. And that was his label, though. He wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? It was artist-driven. Motown is the only label at the time that I know of that took their main female artist and put her against the heavyweights of the time on that label and made number one hits together nationally. Yeah. I've never seen that before. I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong. What do you know? Yeah, they had they had a formula, man. And that shit worked like a motherfucker because they had the right talent to do it, which was the woman. Because yeah. you could have a man sing all day, girl, I'ma love you, girl, I'ma love you, girl, I'ma love you. Man, I'ma love you, man, I love you. But, but, but when you put that duet together, it culminated, that formula culminated wow. into Tammy Terrell and Marvin Gaye. Right, there you go. And who else did that, though? <laughs> who else did that? Not a lot of people, man. Not That's people. the power of a lady. Yeah. Balance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We can't get that shit today, ladies and gentlemen, because all, all, all these men are divas like the women now. Niggas, people smacking girls in the face because they can't have hits bigger than them if they lead a the group. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. Shout out to Howard Hewitt. <laughs> this is for the lover in you. This ring. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna smack Jody yeah. Wiley, bastard. Yeah. You know what I mean, hey, they they pay for it though. Karma is a mother. Well, hell you know yeah. I mean? yeah. But, but even look at that, yo. Howard Hewitt smacked Jody Wiley and said, "You'll never have a career without Howard Hewitt." Right? I beg to differ. But check this out. Jody Wiley is a pioneer in hip hop music. Friends will let you down. Yeah. Friends yeah. won't Rock be, and that. And that introduced Rakim to a bigger audience. Shout out to Eric B for using the duet formula to bring hip hop and R&B together. I'm not saying he's the first because you had Shaka Khan and Melly Mel, right? But what song's that? Um, I feel for you, and then they used the I feel for you, and they and they used Melly Mel. I forgot what Sugar Hill gang song. He said, he said Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, let me rock you, Shaka Khan. Um, that, that was part of their song. Oh, okay, I know and that. And they I used like, that. actually rapped on the song, man. I didn't know that. He was rapping on the song. All I heard was Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. Dude. You know what I'm saying? I don't know the rest of the words. But... Well, at the end of the day, if you look at the uh, Jody Watley joint, Rakim is actually in the video with her. Right. Jody Watley, as much as, you know, we talk about Old school shit, you know, Run DMC, Curtis Blow, you know, <laughs> all that stuff, right? Yeah. They might talk about that. But if Jody Wiley didn't put Rakim in the video for Friends and it made and it became a hit single, bruh, come on, yo. That made Rakim a star to the and point where people pioneering. had to, yeah, like people was looking to see who could we get next to sing and we do a song with him. Run DMC did, you know, rock, Walk This Way. Which they really didn't want to do. Fun fact. But, um, who, who what's up? Group was that? They did walk. Oh, Aerosmith. Who, um, Aerosmith. Aerosmith. Yeah, Aerosmith. And look, oh, yo, go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. From 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 Jody Watley doing that, you got one of the most iconic hip hop R and B duels ever with Method Man and Mary. Man, Method Wiley. Mary, exact exactly. Yeah. And that, and that was my point, because people wanted the next 
R and B thing to work. And did you right. know Run DMC tried to do a song with Michael Jackson? Yeah, yeah that shit didn't work. It was trash, trash. It did sure not work. <laughs> it was damn, trash. Damn. Here comes the man, hot damn. Yeah. It, did, it didn't work. I got it off. Yeah. You stupid. <laughs> it, did, it, did, it did not work, y'all. But you know what? It just goes to show you the power and the dynamics of male and female energy and how when they come together, compliment, not that opposite sex opposed shit, but men and women come together to make music. It can be some of the most beautiful music you've ever heard. That's why we're going to do this duets battle. I'm going to whoop his ass because I've been studying this duet shit and I'm coming for blood on this one. You can look at the camera. You can give him the look. It's okay. I'm coming. Andrea. Watch that episode. Bloodbath over there. I'm whooping his ass, yo. Yes, go ahead. Hey, Dre, watch your man Nas win, man. Nah. See if I get not even close. Not, not. <laughs> I try, hey, I, I, yo, I wish we could do this on the radio so we could actually play the music during the, during the thing. That would be a three-hour show. I would love to do. I would love yeah, to like, we, play we need, without getting flagged every 10 minutes, man. Yeah. yeah, because we might have to make a different playlist and see whose playlist was better or something. Yeah. Because, look, I'm going to keep it real with you, yo. This is my opinion. You tell me yours. When a man sings, it's very passionate. But when a woman sings, it's very emotional. And when you bring... Um, I know you did. But let me say it my way. But when you put passion and emotion together, you create harmony. And that's what a lot of music is missing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Who the right. fuck is Scissor right. singing with? Right. Nobody. Who's her singing with? Sing with me. Daniel Caesar. Who fuck Daniel Caesar? Sing with me. Yo, the best part. Of <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. Oh, that's, sing oh, with that's me. what um the song old girl Lee Jane. She sang on that on that um that whack ass show that was on Channel Five. That uh, that music. The voice. They, yeah, they they stole her Shh. wins. Yeah. Shout out to Lee Jane. Word. Word is wrong. Yeah, word. Leah Janae is one of the most important voices that we had in a long time. That before before Diddy turned his name to Love, he was co-signing Leah Janae pretty hard. So shout out to them. Shout out to the Gaines family. You know what I mean? But yeah, bro, I mean, genres, genres, man, genres. We talked about blues. Let's go R&B, yo. Who are some of the most pivotal females in, in R&B music that, you know, move the crowd to you? Let's go one for one. Let's battle a little bit. Whitney Houston. Oh, by far. Look, bro. Yo. <laughs> yeah, I'll play no oh, games. Give it I'll play no games. I love Whitney Houston. Got, yo. You know what? I got to start collecting those pops, yo. Yeah, I just do music for you, yo. You, yo. you probably got like a billion dollars worth. Like, you know what I'm saying? Those Maybe. Yeah, some of them. Yeah. Whitney Houston is yours? Why Whitney Houston? Why you say Whitney Houston? Well, I said it earlier, man. Like, her voice, man. Her voice was like unique at the time man i ain't gonna see mm -hmm. that at the time her voice was unique man and i told you like yo this is the woman that rocked the national anthem so good that they made it into a single they were selling yeah. her singing the national anthem you yeah. know oh say can you see you know anybody yeah. else ain't buying that shit man what do you say like oh damn that shit sound good as up there she ripped that let me I pay for it. Let me get it. And record companies, man, they they follow suit. Here you go. Give me money. And she made money off that. Yeah. Come on, man. Like. Yeah. Oh man, she was like one of yo. She was one of the most. I mean, pivotal voices in the game, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey yo, I I I I'll, I'll equal you with Houston with Janet Jackson, pop music. I, 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 love, I love them both. But let me tell you something about Janet. Janet is the mother of modern arm. Well, not modern, because this shit today is trash. But up until Destiny's Child, Janet Jackson is the author of all RB and pop music. When Presley Principle came out, that changed the game for everybody. Everybody. I mean, Britney Spears, if you want to go into the uh, the other folks. Um, Shakira, Selena, all them people study Janet Jackson. Right. I was going to say, to piggyback off you. Yeah. I didn't interrupt you, but you got to it, piggyback bro. off you. Off you like her showmanship, man. Bro. Her showmanship is emulated in damn near every female artist that you see right now, man. Talk about it. 
And like I said, till this day, I still wonder, like, she gets down. Yeah. And she still, it's like she's doing her thing and she still sounds like, she sounds like the record. Yeah. It's not the record playing, it's her singing. And it's like, I'm wondering, like, how does she have that control? Because anybody else would be up there like, but she up there doing her thing. It's like, we are a part of her. Like, she doesn't yeah. sound like she's even moving. So check this out. That alone is amazing. Check this out. What made Mitten Houston great is that they took her character and made her to a bona fide star, right? Janet Jackson's first album or two was garbage. Mm-hmm. She got with Jerry or Timmy, what was that? Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis? Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Flight, what was that flight time? Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, right? Two of the baddest. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Two of the baddest that ever produced or written, right? They, 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 same, like, same, same duo that gave you um, any just heartbreak. Right. Any, everything that you like, period, right? Check this yeah. out. If you really study Janet Jackson's career, you know how everybody said like Outcast is the best because every album sounded different. Mm-hmm. Go to Rhythm Nation, go to Control, go to Jet. Right. Listen, they all right. totally different. Right. One's R and B, one's New Jack Swing, one's pop mm-hmm. had rock and roll on it. Let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. What people credit Outcast and Kendrick Lamar and people like that for doing for hip hop, Janet did that for music. Right. Janet shows you range. That's why she's going to be like, she's always top top two, top three for me, yo. And I say three because maybe I asked somebody else in there, but it's not that close. Whitney and Janet are like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Way, way above everybody else. You know what I'm saying? The only other person I could put up there, I'll put, I'll talk about after you go. You got anybody else you want to put in? I don't even know. No? Nah? Um, I was gonna say, I was gonna say Lauren. Okay, why not? I was gonna say Lauren from her um for her for her content, Miss Education. Yeah, okay. And that's that's but that's the thing. Like mm-hmm. that's one album. It's a perfect album. One solo album, yo. Until this day, that was twenty. Yeah, yo. Yeah. 25 years, 1999, 25 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still one of the best soul albums ever. Per- ever, period, man. Ever. I don't give a fuck about, you know, people try to discredit it. She didn't write or she didn't produce. I don't give a fuck. Look at the body oh. of work that is. Shout yeah, out to the mayor people. of Newark, Ross Baraka. It's on there. Yeah. But, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yo, yo you, you had people doing like whole like speeches off of that album, yo. Yo, like yes. To, to, to inspire somebody to put their whole train of thought into your body of work and express that to a crowd is amazing. That's next level. We haven't seen an album like that. That's what, see, albums like that is what people fought for in the 70s and 60s. Mm-hmm. Remember, um, if you remember, let, let music history, y'all, I hate to be the smart guy says everything in music history, but Stevie Wonder went to war against his label and Marvin Gaye went to war against Motown because they wanted artist rights to make the type of album they wanted. I forgot the Stevie Wonder album that came out, but Marvin Gaye was what's going on. Those are the albums that inspired. And people got away from that. And Lauren Hill went back to that timeless formula and gave us an album that's going to be talked about even after we're gone. Yeah. Like I said, if it wasn't for the ladies going into the emotion and the sensuality of music, music would be dead today. And I stand on it. You're right. Yeah, I know. Right, because as as look, we um us men feed from the women. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, back in our day, the, the ladies love the dudes that can sing. Oh, I know. So you had a lot of dudes singing. Uh, ugly niggas who could sing was getting some love, yo. Oh, 
Fuck them niggas too, yo. You had a high voice. You had a high pitch before you could hit the. You could hit yo. Even till the day, like you could hit them falsettos, man. You got the ladies. Fuck them niggas. Usher. Uh, sure. <laughs> the bump shooter. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, yo. Um, <laughs> all right, I, 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 I'm gonna shout shout out to Princess Ronnie. What's up, Ronnie? Well, we, she was on the live, right? Mm-hmm. And she was just playing music back and forth and whatnot. You know, mm-hmm. you know, I was I was in there. That's one of my people from my old job. So um somehow the, the um subject got on Usher and one I, I don't know if it was one of her friends, but she was like, I love Usher. I just and I put in the and I put in the type in the comments, I was like, You just love Usher because you can hit the behind notes. And she was like, Yes. You know what I'm saying? So okay. the dudes that be <laughs> the dudes that can hit those false settles real good, they they had the girls, man. Jamie Foxx. Like they love, yeah. 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 Well, what about what about those octaves yeah. that them ladies hit too, yo? Oh my goodness. Mariah Carey that's is special. Oh yeah, but see, that's why I gotta come back to Shanice. Talk about that show, girl. Shanice. I love and the thing is, like, I love her voice. Like, I like she's like she 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 wasn't one of the ones I was crushing on. I, I love her for her talent, you know what I'm saying? But she's a beautiful woman though. I love I love her for her talent, like her um, and I feel like me myself I always root for the underdog man. And I feel like she never got her just due. She never got the um, the album she was supposed to get that would put her in that high echelon where she deserved to be, because her voice is is dope and like she's been doing music since she was a kid. Mm. You know what I mean? Like she's like the same way. The same way you had the Brandy, Monica, and the Leahs come out doing their thing, rest in peace, Leah, doing their thing up until now. Mm-hmm. Like she was doing music back when she was in her teens, or maybe preteens, I think, because I think she, I think she got put on. When she was like around twelve or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Like I think she had her first album when she was in her teens, but like she never got like she never got the the get with a. Get with a um Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis or 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 um or Teddy Riley like some of the of that caliber that could that could like put her voice put her voice with a with a with a dope track that that could reach the masses like that like the most we got is I love your smile yesterday and um um when I close my eyes and stuff like that so that's why I feel like she's one of like one of the the most unsung singers we ever we ever had when it comes to female artists. Man, listen. I want to give a shout out to the singers that people don't talk about enough. She's one. Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, even wor- even worse than them. Listen, I'm a hip hop head, y'all. That's all well and good. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Blue Raspberry. You know who Blue Raspberry is? I'm sure you know, right? No. Blue probably... Raspberry. Yes, you do. You know Blue Raspberry. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Blue Raspberry is the woman that sung all the Wu Tang stuff early. Blue okay. Raspberry's yeah, yeah, yeah. voice okay, 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 okay. is yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I want to give a shout out to Blue Raspberry because there's women that made hip hop fly over the radar that we don't give enough credit to. And Blue Raspberry is one of them women. I, uh, for, if I ever, if Blue Raspberry, if you see this, thank you for, Wu-Tang's my favorite group, but if it wasn't for you, oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. if it wasn't for you, a lot of what made Wu-Tang special would have never happened. Rainy Days, uh, Relisha Delph. Oh, uh, that's the oh thing. my God. Um, Glaciers of Ice. Heaven and Hell. Yeah. Um, rainy days, whatever you know. I mean, Blue Raspberry. It, it, yo, I don't know what happened with Wu Tang and Blue Raspberry because Takifa came later. But if Blue Raspberry sung on the Wu Tang double CD, please, please, Blue Raspberry is amazing. What about Shatasha? You know Shatasha, right? That's the one who sung "It's the Thug is Rug is Bone." Like yo, she I was about to mention, said yeah, that. Yeah, I was gonna yo. say that. I was gonna say hey. that. Hey, what about the female that sang on the on the Bone Thugs and Harmony joints, man? Shatasha, hey. Thug is Rug is Bone. Shatasha set 
You didn't even know who Bone was, but when you heard that voice, mm-hmm. you knew it was going to be special. I have exactly. another one Put for you. Yeah, I have another one. Uh, another female, Latoya Williams. You know Latoya Williams? You know the song um, Warren G looking at me? No. Okay, she's on there. She's on Snoop Dogg's albums. She does the duet with October London on his album. Mm-hmm. Latoya Williams is an amazing... Her, oh, her voice is beautiful, yo. Marsha Ambrosius is another person. Y'all know her for Flowetry and all that. But what she does with Dr. Dre is mm-hmm. so amazing that there's women who go into the hip-hop world and just sing but, that yeah, are amazing. That may or may not get the respect that they deserve. I and mean, I want to give it to them today. The respect I, would, I not, mean. Not the previous ones, but I would say Marsha Ambrosius is, is um a, I would say is, is a little bit more popular than, than them yeah, because they know far. her from Floetry. Yeah. They know for matter of fact, she I think she wrote Butterflies by Michael oh. Jackson. No, matter of fact, I think Butterflies was on a Floetry album first. Right? Then Michael yeah, she, Jackson was like, yo, I like that. Let me get that. Then he sang it, made it a hit. And then on her first solo album she you know she sang it as a remix you know what i'm saying so i yeah, mean Marsha yeah. oh she's out there yo she yeah. wrote that song when she was a like a teenager like 13 14 i think yeah Marsha ambrosius is special yo she dope man she's dope let's talk about that type of hip bomb music i mean Marsha ambrosius what does jill scott and erica badu mean to the world mm, that's that uh I still think of R and B, but they call it neo soul. Yeah, soul music and R and B. It's hard to differentiate the two. Yeah, yeah. Um, other side of the game is a dope track. Yeah, bag lady. Yeah, I know y'all ladies love your better call Tyrone. Y'all love that one. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Sean Price for remixing that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Put that off the all. Um, Magnum Force joint. Magnum right? Force album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The word. I got that joint. That's just, that's just, that was dope. Uh, <laughs> the love and you, you said Joe Scott, right? Yeah, Joe Scott. Come on, do. Oh, man. Uh, can't get no way what I feel. Yo, the song about beating ass. If you mess with a man, y'all ladies can relate to that. A uh, long walk. Yeah. Long I like walk. the way. Um, dope. Yeah, that one. That's a know, classic. Man. Um, I like her joint. I like that joint, Fool's Gold. That was dope. Okay. Fool's okay. Gold. I remember that. That's the next album. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, she's dope. Went into acting. Um, yeah. So her, yo, um, yo, Black her, her music, like her, yeah, Black Light Out. Yo, she was mm. dope on that. Oh, yeah. She was looking good. Yeah, she was looking good. Mm. Um, yo, her music is like, I got like a, a, a playlist where I just chill and vibe to. Like, like, I, I think the songs you mentioned, some of the songs you mentioned is on that list, on that playlist, man. Yeah. It's like her. She's a vibe, yo. It's like her. Yeah. You just, that's, that's like that, that, um, that, that. Smooth, yo. Smooth, cruising. Yeah. Just laid back, chill, background type music, man. That you just, that's like people yeah. in the lounge. In the lounge, just chilling, that type of music, yo. Like her but, music is relaxing, man. Like, and Erica Badu made you. You know, she made you think. Yeah, but um, and I love. I, I mean, it's damn. No, you got it. You got it. You got it. But I, I love her old to hip hop. Yo, love of my life. Yeah, she, she caught that. She caught yeah, that the Brown Sugar album. I think when it comes to singer singers, we have a lot of. We have a lot of um. We have a lot of people we could talk about. Um, there's so many artists in music that are so pivotal. And when you put up the Freedom song from the Panther soundtrack, that's when we've seen a whole lot of them come together that we don't yeah. see a lot of today. Like, it was dope seeing Salt and Pepper and In Vogue with um, Vanessa Williams and Shanice and Brownstone and all the women get together to make a statement when it comes to music. Even... even on a lower level, 
but it's still a high key song. Brandy, I want to be down remix. Yep. I think that's one of the most important songs remixed with all women in it that ever came out in music. Period. How how do you feel about that statement? Yeah, that was um would I say that? Cause you had what? You had yo yo. I love yo yo. Yo yo, MC Light, Queen Latifah. <laughs> Word, word, and brandy. That was dope, and that was the first time somebody had done that on the female side. Talk about it. That's what I'm saying. That was the first time, and that was that was real pivotal, man. Like, cause don't get me wrong, like the original song was dope in itself. That was her original, man. man that was her first single off that first album, right? Yeah, I want to be down. Single. Yeah, yeah, I want to be down. Then when she came out with that, then everybody, hey, you know, I had all the girls doing that shit right there. <laughs> they did um. Yeah, and then it just um, yo, did yo just came out of I think yo 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 set it off right. No, was it yo yo or um or MC Light? I think MC Light set it off. MC Light set it off, man. Yo yo ripped it, man, and and, and Queen, Queen Latifah man, Queen, Queen closed it out. Yeah, yeah, closed yeah. it out, tore it down, yo, and like yeah. I mean that song like was so iconic that like they came out. Well, they 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 did it again for BET right a couple years ago. Like, the woman's tribute, yeah. yeah. Yes, they did. Yeah. And you know, it was mimic because you had Ladies Night come out years later. Angie Martinez must be Angie on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> you, know what I'm you know, it was cool. You know, we had you know Left Shout Eye on there. Eye, yeah. Shout out, rest in peace, the Left Eye. Yeah. But I mean, I'm not saying the ladies don't ever come together because didn't um, Kelly Price, Faith, and Whitney Houston have a song together? It happens. Heartbreak Hotel, right? Yeah, it happens, Heartbreak but Hotel. it doesn't happen to me enough. I don't know if the labels is doing it. I don't know if the women just don't get along or that people try to put them against each other, but we miss a great oh, deal. Okay. And I'm okay. speaking of hip-hop, salute to Sylvia Robinson, who started Sugar Hill Records in New Jersey, mm-hmm. our state, because without her, we probably wouldn't have mainstream hip-hop at all. Mm. So, you know what I mean? Is there is there any women from any other genres that you would like to highlight and give a salute to on today to show that we're not just, we're not uncultured, that we like music, all types of music. You know what I mean? Is there anything you Missy, want to, anybody going to shut up? Missy. Missy? Missy. I'm going international with mine, but you go ahead with Missy. Go ahead. Missy, um, old girl from the brand new heavies. Oh, and Dia Davenport. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Never yeah, stop, never giving. Oh, I love yes. her. Yes. Yeah, man. I yeah. love her, yo. Yeah, that's my joint, man. I love her, yo. Her voice is beautiful, man. Yeah, bro. Powerful. Yo, man, that's, that's a group that don't get shit enough respect. Like to, You're damn man. right. Like Club Nouveau. Yeah, it was one of them groups that, <sighs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know. But you're going, you're going, you're going to Dia Davenport and Missy, right? Yeah, Missy. You got yeah. two. I'm going to give you two. I'm gonna go a male LaRue. Oh, that was in our head for real. That's my joint, yo. Uh Groove Theory. Yes. And how and she got a song when you gonna get up from the blues album she did. Yo, she's man, her voice is amazing. But I wanna also go international. She's on the tip of my tongue too, man. I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> Shout out to A Marie as well. But yeah, yo. <laughs> <laughs> but but now I'm gonna go international, yo. There's people who sing have sung songs that whether you know their you know the language or not, they're amazing. I want to give respect to Selena. We all may know the movie for Jennifer Lopez and all that, and you know she did music too. No disrespect. Selena was one of a kind, yo. Yeah. Selena, um, you got um. Sister Nancy, mm-hmm. you don't love me, and I know. I mean, come on, yo, international. Oh, no, Sister, no, no, yeah, 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 yo, pivotal. Um, Lisa, Lisa, we ain't gonna talk about that. Can see that smile, y'all? Lisa, ooh, somebody grandma looked good to me back in the day. I'm gonna tell mm-hmm. you, I used to love Lisa, Lisa, but um, yeah. Celia Cruz, the Afro Latina movement in music. Celia Cruz, Azucar, which means yes, sugar. Yes, yes, she yes. 
she's amazing yeah. and pivotal even breaking that barriers. Latin culture. Yeah. She broke barriers with being a dark-skinned Latin woman who sung music. So right. there was many women in music that have taken countries, cultures, ethnicities, beliefs, and took them to the masses all over the world. But is there one or any international singers that you listen to that really move you? I got one in particular. I can't think of off the head right now, man. Well, I'll give you mine. Why he thinking? Mother up in Sade. Man, let me tell you about Sade. Damn. <laughs> Sade is... People say they listen to Sade when they want to go to sleep. And I, I get it. Her music is very smooth. Yeah. But let me tell you about Sade. Get into that mood and listen to her music. Cherish the day. Yeah. Your love is king. Y'all know sweet is taboo and all this. So it's, yeah. But let me tell you something. Yo. Sade is the truth, yo. What's up? No ordinary love, man. That's it. That's it. Could you imagine a beautiful woman singing that to you, looking into your eyes? See? It's over. Speechless. Mm-hmm. Speechless. Everybody, I mean, you got you got these stupid ass women out here nowadays, like Kaya and shit, talking about some my back, my 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 cat, my back. You know, and you got people who barely have talent that whenever they rap or something, they start shaking their butt. And then that's what the that's what the whole thing is about. Listen, even today we have great artists like Rhapsody who rhyme. Her that sings and plays the guitars. We got Lotto who really can rap, ladies and gentlemen, who really has talent. You know, mm-hmm. people like Flo Millie. I don't know her like that, but her name, her name comes out. You know, we have people out there that really do Tierra Whack, Lil Sims. We have people out here doing it. But if it wasn't for the women that broke the genre, music that we know it today would be so subpar. And that's why music is harshly criticized today because without the woman, we all are failing when it comes to capturing the essence of society and soul through song. And that's my speech to get up out of here. What you got to say, bro? Oh, I got to say this, man. Um, We come from a different era. Facts. We, we come from a way different, a way, way different. We talk about late 70s all up to now. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, the bar... The bar is set like you can't even see my hand. That's how bar. That's how high the bar is for us. So when we hear stuff that's like subpar, getting a lot of play, and you have talent that's like quote unquote underground or quote unquote you know or independent that doesn't get the play that it deserves, like that's where the disconnect comes with us. You know what I'm saying? So. Shout out to you women doing your thing. I always shout out um new artists because, like I said, I like to introduce you to your new favorite artists. Always shout out Darcy. She has three singles out. I always shout out Stephanie. Um, artists like Raquel Leanne that has music out. Even, um, what's up, Nika? Nika Ledeen. Um, artists out there, females out there that's, that has the potential to be historical, but because of the way the industry is right now, they got a hard fight ahead of them. All right? So, yo, my women, you know I love y'all to death. They call me the romantic for a reason. I I, I became a romantic off y'all music. I grew up off y'all music, man. So, you know, you sing to me, and I flow with you. And with that said, man, oh, Almost forgot. Song of the week, man. Let's go. What you got for us? Me, personally? I'm listening to Mary J. Blige, yo. What's the 411 album, yo? I'll take it back to the 90s. Mary J. Blige, what's the 411? What's the 411 remix albums right now? It's on my playlist. What about you? Well, me? Um, Like I said, this is Black... Uh... Women's History Month. I keep saying black women because, you know, I love my sisters. But it's Women's History Month, man. So, you women, y'all, are, you know, the, we talk about the divide and stuff, but y'all are special to us, man. Y'all are special to me. So, the song I have for you this week is Special by Shantae Moore off 
number three track off her Love the Woman album. Check it out. That one's for you. Uh that's deep, yo. Um before we leave, is there one woman artist that you would like the world to check out? That maybe was out that you think didn't get appreciated enough. I have two, one very old, and one maybe not so much. But just shout out to the balloons. I got balloons. Is there anyone that you like that you would like to highlight? <laughs> like I said, Shanice got yeah, Shanice. Um, uh, I like Mona Lisa. Yes, indeed. When she was doing music, um, I like her I like now. Mona Lisa. Special mention, yeah, she's beautiful. Um, special mention is Mona Lisa. Um, who's another one out there that doesn't get her just do? Uh, brain freeze, man. Yeah, um, Shanice, Mona Lisa. Um, yeah, that's about it from now, man. Okay, I want to give you two. Mm-hmm. If y'all are hip hop fans and you know Knife Wonders music, I ask y'all to check out the Phyllis Hyman discography. Mm. Phyllis Hyman was amazing. Shout out to Gail Campbell, who reminds me of Phyllis Hyman. Check out mm. Gail Campbell, Bloody Waters, and Let My People Go, produced Go by Stan it. Ipkiss. Yeah. Ipkiss. But there's one woman whose career got destroyed because she wanted to sing at the Trump inauguration. You know what I'm talking about? That would be Chrisette Michelle. I think Chrisette Michelle was an amazing singer. She's dope. And people people killed Chrisette Michelle and her career for singing at the Trump or wanting to sing at the Trump inauguration. I don't know about y'all, if y'all really hated her that much, but she is a great talent, just like Blue Raspberry. I think they come one in the moon. And a, a blue moon, actually. And I mean, hate her or love her, Chrisette Michelle is one of the purest, most beautiful singers I've heard. Just like Kiki Wyatt. Powerful, oh, great singer. I, I would have mentioned her, man. Yo, Like Kiki Wyatt? Yo, yeah. Kiki Wyatt, right? Mm-hmm. After she disappeared after after the, the whole thing. The with, stuff, um, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, whatever happened. I went looking for her music. I went looking to see if she did any more albums, and I found like what two or three. Like she has dope music. I think one song I really love from her from her is um Who Knew. It's an up tempo okay. track of one of her albums, like the real dope song. And it's a shame that she that it took for her to go into the to the um reality show scene for her to get her just doing respect with her voice is so amazing. Yeah, look. Love Kiki White, man. And if there's one more I could throw out there, Leela James, yo. I love Leela James, man. Yeah. Maybe it's just because I just love Leela James. But for some, but I'm telling you, I love her music. She's she's different. So we didn't want to take this too long, y'all. Thank you for joining us on ANN and RB. Make sure you can hit the like button, comment, and share the video. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. So that you know what's coming out. Also follow us on follow follow us on I, um, IG at A N N O N R N B. That's A N N O R N B on your on your Instagram, and we will be back soon with a duet battle that he's gonna get smoked in. I'm telling you now, and we have another show coming up. <laughs> Whatever, yo, he gonna get his ass. Whooped. I'm telling you, yo. and we got another show coming up, which is the battle of the siblings. Michael Jackson versus Janet Jackson. Let's this see who wins works that. for a minute. And, yo, believe me, we've been studying this. Well, I have. I don't know. He, yeah. I don't know about him. Yeah. He gonna go to Wikipedia. Michael Jackson. So... Listen, I'm coming in with facts. Well, who uses Look Wikipedia, at... man? Yo. You. <laughs> I'm telling you now. He might go to Wikipedia and be like, Michael Jackson was born on the moon in October 6, <laughs> 2025. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Yeah. Nah, he, killed, yeah, he killed Shimon in practice. I know. Yeah, he killed Shimon. <laughs> Shimon. 
Shout yeah, out to nah. Black Dynamite. You know what I'm saying? But, word, word. Michael John White, yo. but yo, we, we, we're going to up our A and RB. This man is going to put some more stuff on IG because we know it's been yeah. a little spacey between things. And it's, 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 it's life and it's our fault. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we love y'all and we don't want to lose the momentum and we don't want to lose y'all as the viewers. So thank you for everybody who's helping us get our followers up. We at 190. Let's get to 200. After yeah, 200, let's get to 500. Good. Let's keep going. All right. I really appreciate y'all, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. That matters, man. It, it lets me know that, you know, I'm saying something that either, you know, you're interested in. So, Word. Man, thank you for that. Appreciate it. And may the most high bless you all. And without further ado, Nas, take us. This is a and on r b It's your man, Nas Romantic. Hip-hop soul career, y'all. He's disappeared. But like you said, we coming back with more. Check out, uh, I got, um. Same song, different artists coming soon, and a couple more other things, man. And I guarantee you're going to love it. So this is me, Karev. We out. And until next time, I'll be thinking of you. Peace.